we'll be focusing now on the competitive environment that a business operates within. Lovely little quote there. Nothing focuses the mind better than the constant sight of a competitor who wants to wipe you off the map. Wise words from the former CEO of PepsiCo. The competitive environment looks broadly at power in the market. Who has power? Do you have power? Do your rivals have power? Do your customers have power? Do your suppliers have power? Now, in a competitive market, there are a lot of producers competing to satisfy the needs of a large number of consumers. In other words, power is diluted. There are a number of different market structures that a firm could operate within. They're listed at the top of the screen. We're gonna go through them one by one. Starting at one extreme is perfect competition, beloved of economists. Uh, unfortunately, it's a market structure that doesn't exist in the real world. Um, in a perfectly competitive market, there are loads and loads and loads of competitors selling identical products. Now, that means that none of them are going to have any pricing power. My examples on the right hand side show an approximation of that commodities. Let's say that you're a wheat farmer. Now, the price of wheat might be incredibly low at the moment, but you've grown the wheat, you've got to sell it. There are loads and loads and loads of other wheat producers. So whatever the market price is, whatever buyers are prepared to pay for that wheat, that's the price that you are going to get. If you try to charge a higher price, literally nobody is going to buy from you. Um, a less good example is the foreign exchange market. By and large, that is reasonably competitive. Um, there are loads of uh, people who you could buy um, foreign exchange from. There are loads of people buying foreign exchange, such that if the value of the pound goes up or down, broadly speaking, it's what the market is doing. It's what you covered on theme one. Now, the reason why I say it's a reasonably good example is occasionally the government can get involved in it. And for example, the Chinese government um, actually is a really big player to try to manipulate the value of the Chinese yuan or NIMBY. But in Europe, other than occasionally when there's an emergency, the price of foreign currency is the price that hundreds and thousands of buyers and sellers want it to be. At the other end of the spectrum is a market structure that also doesn't exist in a pure form in the real world, and that's of monopoly. As the name implies in a game of monopoly, your aim is to knock everybody else out of the market, so there's only one player. So in a monopoly, mono means one, there is literally one competitor, and that implies that it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, for others to join that market. Again, decent examples, water supply, there's a reasonable chance, if I had said a very high chance, that every single member of the class that you are in will get their water from the same supplier. So where I live, it's going to be Thames water. So if Thames decided to increase their price, they're not actually allowed to do that because of regulation that we've covered on another video. But if they did decide to increase their price by 50, 60, 70 percent, there's actually very little that as a consumer you can do about that. What are you going to do? Move home? Um, other examples would be search engines. Again, not such a good example, but I'm willing to bet that most of you automatically default to Google as your primary search engine. Similarly, PC operating systems. Um, again, if you're watching this on a PC, I bet you're watching it via Windows. So good examples of monopoly. So if those are the theoretical market structures, what are the real world ones? Well, there's two, monopolistic competition and oligopoly. Now, monopolistic competition, just like with perfect competition, there are loads and loads and loads of competitors, but they are selling slightly different goods or services. So that gives them a small amount of pricing power. If they charge too much, then you're gonna to go to a rival. So good examples on the right hand side, dentists. You are likely to go to a different dentist uh, to the person who sits next to you in class. Why? Because you trust your dentist to a, to a certain extent. They might be positioned locally to, you, to where you live, or alternatively, you might just have uh, experienced good service from them in the past. They don't hurt you when they do your teeth. Um, second example, hairdressers. Now, there are the odd, national hairdressing chain, for example, Tony and Guy. But by and large, you walk down any 
high street you'll be seeing three four five different um, hairdressers or nail salons or whatever so again slightly different service you tend to go back to the one that you like same with car repair firms loads of them uh, within about a mile of where you live there'll be 20 different car repair firms you'll see your um, uh, national chain like Halfords but by and large these are relatively small um, garages often family owned affairs if we now look at the biggest the most important market structure it's oligopoly now in an oligopoly there are only a few players in the market that really matter if we take groceries within a mile of where you live there will be loads of places from which you can buy your groceries but there's only four that really matter and those are tesco sainsbury's asda's and morrison's you might wish to include little and aldi you might wish to include uh, the co-op or waitrose or marks and spencer but there are a relatively small number of players that dominate that market um, which implies that it's uh, i've used the word tricky down the bottom in terms of entry it might be relatively easy to set up as a as a grocer but it's going to be very 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 difficult to compete with one of those big players um a second market structure uh sorry a second example would be banking uh again uh it's going to be companies like barclays natwest um hsbc uh, and lloyd's that dominate that particular market um the premiership premiership football there's really um only about six players six firms out of the 20 in that market or 92 if we take the full football league that are really important the others frankly didn't bother being there particular examples of um subsets of oligopoly duopoly uh if we look at the scottish football league rangers and celtic have won more than 90 percent of all of the league titles since the um since the scottish premiership was uh, set up including its previous forms. You look at the league tables back 100 years ago, exactly the same as what they are now. Rangers and Celtic dominate. Um, final example, again, of a duopoly, you look at, at your mobile phones. I'm willing to bet that either you've got an iOS-based mobile phone if you've got an Apple, or you've got an Android if you've got a, almost any other make. So if you're in a competitive market, you've got to find some way of standing out from the opposition. We call it competitive advantage. For example, Apple bring out a new version of the iPhone pretty much every year. Uh, you might go for a short term sales promotion. You might go for dropping your prices for a short while. You might go for slight adaptations of your existing products uh, to try to make people buy more of them. Um, you might try to change your distribution network. Typically these days, that means trying to sell more online. Um, in the groceries market, one of the biggest threats um, is going to be potentially Amazon. Uh, Tesco are really worried about how Amazon might get a foothold in that market because Amazon are fantastically good at distributing online. You might decide to adopt a different approach. So Waitrose makes itself stand out not by being cheap, but by having good customer service, Waitrose John Lewis, uh, again, their parent firm do that in the market that they operate in. The last thing that we look at is market size that can be measured by either value pounds or volume units in a given market. Now, obviously, some markets will be growing, for example, online uh, sales, some markets will be shrinking for example newspaper sales and others are going to be largely unchanged and that growth or shrinkage can be fast or slow uh, the newspaper market has been going through a slow death for many 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 years um, the thing about a growing market is that it tends to attract new rivals into the market um, so with the growth of uh, short term air travel, not at the moment with coronavirus, but uh, that has attracted lots of new players into the short term uh, flight market. And that's it for this particular topic.